Meteor 3.1.1 is out and in this patch we have some important fixes that we have done to share with you and also a boost on real-time performance. And to talk about this important patch I'm here with core members from the Meteor team. Gabriel Gruber, how are you doing man? I'm doing fine and you? And I'm also here with Nacho Codonier, how are you man? Oh, I'm fine, how are you? One of the highlights of this patch is some performance improvements that we did. Uh, I'm reading the description here that we have in our changelog. Basically, we said that we refactored a synchronous queue for parallel processing and optimized MongoDB observers for faster initial document handling. Can you guys talk a bit about that, please? In Meteor 3, when we hit that version, uh, we discovered it, that we had a regression when using Meteor with some reactive flow. So that scenario impacted us uh, badly in performance in comparison with Meteor 2. So apart from building the performance suite that we have been doing over uh, this time, we have also applied practically uh, some changes on the Meteor core to be able to not be limited in the number of connections that Meteor 3 was having and going beyond that uh, to be not only on pair of Meteor 2 but also even going beyond that. Meteor 3 is faster than uh, previous Meteor 2 versions so it can have more connections as I said and this is our state right now but uh, our next challenges which are also important to mention is that uh, we want to use our performance suite to cover uh, real world scenarios where there are more subscriptions involved, Meteor collections, there are also community packages like Publish Composite and other really common packages used by the community into the equation because we understand that performance uh, is different depending on how your setup is, so we want to be really close on what our community is doing. And we also have another update uh, related to allow and deny rules. Uh, we say that we deprecated async rules and updated documentation and types. What does that mean and what is the impact of that change, guys? So this uh, change has been based by feedback from the community. Uh, it has been important to identify that this part of Meteor, which is when you describe allow the night rules for accessing directly uh, uh, from the client to the Mongo collections, were having some misunderstanding and uh, things that uh, were not working well for the users of this API. So what we have basically done is to simplify. Now you just have insert, update and remove uh, rules to configure. Those are able to also have async validations. So this is one of the important changes here. And we also fixed and expanded test coverage in this area because we also identify thanks to our community that there were some scenarios, edge cases that was not behaving as expected in this new version. And what about the support for Meteor.deprecate, guys? What does this mean? Uh, Nacho made this, so he might be a good one to explain about it. But from what I recall, it's like, it's for our end. It's mostly for internal things. It's to like trace, to make tracing and checking better what's when we deprecate some code API, some like something that we might remove in the future. But we are discussing internally to maybe expose this feature for users, especially for those that make libraries, so that you can like have um, uh, it's it's a clear trace from within the framework, so it's good to know like what's going on and let your users know what's gonna go next next to, to remove this app, this X function or something. I'm not sure. I'm, I think Nacho have something to say about it too. So I'm not sure if you are going to add this, but I just wanted to say that yeah, the, the API is already available for for. Uh, because it's just use meteor Oh, it's they already started. Started. Yeah, yeah, they can they can use it. The thing is that it's not documented. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I guess I wouldn't say it's like it's ready to use, but I, I wouldn't recommend use it too because like what are parameters? Like it, it has to have some docs. I, I wouldn't say to people to use it now, but they can check it and maybe check the source if they really want to start using it now. But it's like, it's for library developers. You can use within your app code, 
but I guess there is e other and easier ways to use it. But for those that make libraries and within Meteor, I guess it's a good thing to have. We also had an upgrade on Node version and a bunch of interesting fixes. Let's talk about this a little bit, guys, please. It, it was mostly house cleaning, I would say, but I, I guess this, this is the fun part because it was mostly done by the community, right, Nacho? So as part of this uh, Meteor patch, we also included uh, support of upgrading the, the tool that Meteor is, like Node version. Uh, we have also uh, checked it out many GitHub issues around several fixes and contributions from the community. Those include uh, some or out from the accounts package. We have also included window fixes and other security updates. And last but not least, let's talk about a, a release of the Meteor RPC package that our friend Gruba has released for us. Was it you, Gruba? Yeah, it was me. Like it is a, this. This is a funny thing. I I believe we we haven't mentioned it anywhere else on videos, I guess, and we haven't gave it that much attention that it needed to. But it was released. It was like on our own private alpha beta thing beforehand, and now it's like it's two people to use. But it is a package. It's called Meteor RPC. You can there's a blog post in our blog on our blog. Uh, we have been mentioning it every now and then. And it's it was officially launched on December and it's powering the new Galaxy. So if you are a Galaxy user, you sh you're already using it. And what it does, it's built on top of a meter. It's a small wrapper around some meter APIs, especially the ones for RPC and real time. And what it does, it gives you some intelligence on the TypeScript level. So it gives you like, what APIs can you call? And it helps you with runtime validation because it uses Zod under the hood to do some validations. It's a package that I believe helps a lot of productivity and brings a modern breeze, breeze to Meteor. So if you have time and you want to check something new on Meteor, please give it a shot. If you, if you need anything, you can reach out to me on X or on the forums and we can talk about it. Or on Discord. We're going to leave the link to the Discord. Oh also. yeah, we have a Discord now. It's yeah. And we're also going to leave a link to the blog post that Gabriel mentioned. It. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for being here one more time. And I'll see you next month, right? With hopefully yeah. some great news about stuff we have been doing that we're not going to talk about here now, but yeah. And before this video ends, I want to give a shout out to community members that helped us release a lot of the content that we just talked about. So here they are. Nine Morello, Perbergland, Storyteller CZ, Mr. Spark 2591, JSTAR PL, Minha, I don't know how to say this, man, I'm sorry, um, Minna, Minna, yeah, Zvokomorov, Zvokomorov, and Quiet the Group, Quiet the Group, yeah, thank you very much, thank you very much, folks, for your contributions, it's very helpful to have you as members of our community, this patch wouldn't be possible without your dedication and contributions to Meteor, thank you, thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this video, if you have any questions, you can just give a shout out for us on our Discord server, the link is here in the description, and also on our forums. I will see you soon, bye! Nueva Morello! Perfect for the storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's Mr. Sparky. Yeah, Mr. Sparky. <laughs> and Mr. Sparky wasn't the one that made the Windows thing.